Hi guys, and today I have a super fun little tutorial in Blender. We're gonna be doing some physics stuff, and you can see we have all of these marbles here, and we're gonna be making this simulation where we have all of these multicolored marbles kind of falling through this grid, and they're all gonna miraculously just land in their own little color groups. And I'm gonna show you how we can do this in Blender, and it's just some little cheat tricks. This is not gonna be a lighting and materials, I'm just gonna show you how to do this, like make this little scene here. It's super simple. You're gonna learn a thing or two about physics and Blender and rigid bodies, so if you're new to that kind of thing, you're really gonna enjoy this tutorial. I'm gonna explain it super well, and I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. So this is it, once again, just showing you. And it's also gonna be available on my Patreon, this final model. So you can see here, all of the balls just fall into their own little slots here. And it's just something about it that's super satisfying. So let's get started. So go ahead and get yourself a new scene open up in Blender. I'm gonna select the default cube. And with the default cube selected, we're gonna hit S on our keyboard. And then we're gonna hit seven. So S and seven, and then just hit enter. So we've scaled it up seven times, and one way to check if this has happened, if you hit the N key on your keyboard, you're gonna see your um, properties pop up here. Just go to the items tab, you can come down here to your scale vectors, and you can see all of the X, Y, and Z coordinates are set to seven. You can also do that manually if you want. But let's come in here, and we wanna scale it down on its Y axis. So the Y axis is the one that is this green one here, and you can see up here. So we're gonna go S, Y, and we're gonna flatten it. And we're gonna flatten it about as much as you want. It doesn't really matter too much. It's just gonna be seen from the front anyway. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit free to go into our right orthographic view. And once you have your thickness determined, you're just gonna quickly go into your edit mode. So go into edit mode. And with all of this geometry active in here, you're gonna go G, Y, and move it back till it is sitting on that blue line there, that blue Z axis there, right? So just wanna move it like that. There you can see. And it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but we're also gonna go G, Z, and we're gonna move it up till it's sitting on the floor here. Go into your front orthographic view by hitting one, and you go G, Z, and move it. Just make sure it's sitting on the floor there, or roughly on that red axis line there as reference. You can hold in control to do snapping. It doesn't really matter too much of this. It's not gonna be that precise. So now that we have this established, we're gonna tab out of edit mode. And now we have to add in the little pegs. So they're really simple to make. So we're gonna go shift A, and we're gonna go add in a cylinder. And we're gonna leave the add cylinder settings as they are. But with this cylinder here selected, we're gonna tab into edit mode. And all of this geometry should be selected. And we're gonna go R, X, nine, zero, and hit enter. So we've rotated it 90 degrees on the X axis here. We're then gonna go S, and we're gonna scale this down. Now, how much you scale it down by is kind of up to you, but if you look at the reference over here or the scale of my scene, it's about that much, okay? It doesn't really matter. Uh, you can have a little bit of play. So we're gonna go G, Y, and also move it forward just a little bit. Just so we have that cylinder like that. And we're gonna to go to our face select option and select this face down here. And we're gonna go G, Y, and move it forward. Now this also is up to you. You don't have to go too far. I also wouldn't recommend going too close. So we're just gonna go about something like that for our peg. And with this face still selected, if you hit Control or Command and then B, so Command B or Control B, with that face selected, you can see we can bevel it. So we're gonna bevel it about that much. And I'm gonna roll my middle mouse button up just a few times to add in some extra geometry in that bevel. And I'm just gonna click and that's done. So now we have a nice rounded looking peg thing here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tab out of edit mode, back into object mode, and we're gonna go into our front view. And with this peg selected, we're gonna hit G in our front view and we're gonna go and just move it over to the side here somewhere. It doesn't have to be precise, so just somewhere roughly about there. And then we're gonna give this a array modifier. And we're gonna come here to our array modifier and we're just gonna take the X value here and just drag it up a bit. So what we're looking for here is a spacing roughly like this. We don't wanna to go too close because otherwise the little balls that are falling through here are gonna get kind of pinned. So you need to make sure you get some good space. So something like that should be fine. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode. In our front orthographic view here with this peg selected, in edit mode, hit A to select it, so make sure all the geometry is selected. So in our front of graphic view, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate, and we're gonna move this guy up. And we're gonna make sure that the distance between here and here is enough for a ball to kind of pass through here. Then we're gonna tab back into object mode, and now we can go back to that array modifier and just mess around with the slider till the distance is the same between here as in here. It doesn't have to be 100%, but just get it as close as you can. So just something like that. Plenty of space for the balls to pass through. And then we're gonna come over here and bump up the count 
until we have it going to the other side of our pegboard here. So you can see we have that. And now we're simply just going to, um, you know, you can drop this array down and we'll come here to the drop down and go duplicate. So now we have an array.001. So we're going to drop that one down. And let's make the value here on the x zero. And the one we're going to be focused on now is going to be the z value. So let's drag the z up and um, let's have a look at that. So let's see. We want to move it up till the spacing between these guys down here and the ones at the top row here are about the same as well. So something like that, in my case, about 1.48. Now the spacing looks okay, but we have way too many on the count here. So just bring the count down till it's like that. So now we have all of our pegs here. And um, if it's too many, you can always come here on both of these and just bring them back a notch like this and then scale them up if you want it to be a little bit less. So I might just do that. Something like this should be fine. Now we have our little pegs ready to go. In fact, I'm just going to bring um, one more down at the top. Sorry, at the top here. So go to the bottom one and bring it down one more. And I'm just going to move this whole thing up like that. So now I have all my little pegs here. And once we're happy with them, we are going to have to apply them before we can add the physics to them. But let's just continue modeling some of the, the rest of the set here. So we're going to go Shift A, add in a simple cube. Go to your front view, we're going to go S, X, and scale this down on the X like this. And then G, Z, move it up till it's sitting on there like that. And we're going to go G, Y, sorry, G, Y, and move it forward. So go to your right orthographic view by hitting free. And then you can go S, Y and scale it down on the Y a bit. And then just move it back till it is the same as the pegs over here, you can see. And with that one selected, we're just gonna go shift, so maybe scale it down. So S, X, just one more time. Then we're gonna go shift D and we're gonna go X and so we're gonna move it to the side. And then shift D, X and move one over here along the X. Just we have these little barriers. I'm not even gonna like measure them out. Just roughly like that should be fine. And now we need to add kind of like a domain. So all of our little balls don't just fall everywhere in our scene. So let's just quickly add in a cube. And we wanna be able to see what we're doing once we scale this up. So let's go over here to our object properties. We're gonna go down to our viewport display and let's just come here to the display as and let's make it wire. But if we were to render this, this would still render. So we need to come up to the visibility as well and just untick render so we won't actually see this in the final render if it's in our scene. So now with this cube selected, we're gonna go S, X and scale it on the X, just about that much. Go to your right orthographic view and you can kind of see what we're doing here. We're just gonna create a domain. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode of the selected. I'm just gonna move it up like this and then I'm gonna go S, Y and it just needs to be encompassing the, um, our scene here. So I'm just gonna move it till the back of it this cube is just right on the face of this um, board over here. And going back to my right view, I'm just gonna select all of these front vertices and just move them back. Just so it's just covering that. So you can see what's going on here, that space right there. Then we're gonna go to our face select, just select the top face and we're gonna go G, Z and just move it up. So our simulation is just gonna be taking place within this box here. So I'm gonna move that up to about here, like that. And then I'm gonna go E to extrude it. And then I'm gonna go S, X and scale it down on the X to make a little bit of a funnel neck here. And then I'm gonna go E to extrude up. And then I'm gonna go S, X and scale it up along the X like that. So we're just making this funnel. And I'm just gonna to go to vertex select, select all the top vertices and just bring them all down a little bit like that. So we're gonna have all of our balls starting at the top here. So go back into solid view. Oh, sorry, we are in solid view. I forgot I set it to wire. So just go to your face select, select this top face over here, make sure that face is selected, hit X and delete that face. Now we have an opening here for, and this is where all our balls are gonna go into. So now essentially when we run our simulation in here, this is gonna be like a domain that just keeps them all in there. We won't actually see this big contraption here in the final render. So I'm gonna tab out of edit mode. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these pegs and I'm gonna to go to my modifiers. I'm gonna to come to the drop down here and apply. Come to the drop down on the second array and apply that. I'm also gonna to go to object mode with them selected and go shade smooth. And I'm gonna just leave it at that. So I've got some funny shading going on here. So if we just tab into edit mode, go to your right orthographic view, hit Z and go into wireframe. Go to your vertex select option, deselect everything. And then just select all of these back vertices to select all of the back faces. 
hit X and delete those faces as we don't need it. So now that's looking a lot better. So now we're also just gonna apply the scale before we get started with any physics. So hit A to select everything, Control A or Command A and apply that scale. So now we need to add in our little balls. So we're gonna go Shift A and we're gonna go to our mesh options and let's add in an icosphere. Now you could leave it like this if you want. So that'll be easier to simulate, but if you want them to be a bit nicer looking, you could always up the amount or just give them a subdivision surface modifier. But I'm gonna just leave it as the default here. So I'm gonna go to object and enable shade smooth with this ball here. And then I'm gonna go G, Z, I'm gonna move it up like this and I'm gonna scale it down like that. And you can make these as big as they need to be, but you gotta be careful that they don't get too big where they will kind of um, get stuck in here. So making them about the same as the diameter of the pegs here is a good way, maybe just a little bit bigger. Then we're gonna go to our right orthographic view and just move it forward. So it's kind of sitting in the middle of this domain over here. So we've got it like that. And then we're just gonna come here and place it up here in a funnel to the left. We also need to make sure to apply this scale. So we're gonna go control A and make sure to apply that scale. So now before we duplicate this guy, we're gonna just add some physics to it so it's ready to go. So we're gonna select this with this ball selected and we've made sure to apply the scale, that's super important. I'm gonna go to our physics setting and we're gonna to go to our rigid body. So click on rigid body. Now this is gonna be a moving part, so it's gonna be active. So we're gonna leave the type as active. But we're gonna come here to the collision shape and we're gonna make sure to make that mesh. So it's not just an approximation here, it's gonna be mesh to mesh um, interaction. And we're gonna come over here to our surface response. And I think we'll leave the friction as it is. Maybe, maybe let's just make the friction 0.3. I think that will be a bit better. I'm gonna come over here to our sensitivity. The margin, we should be able to get away with that. So we're gonna leave it as it is with a scene scale like this. And I think that should all be fine. So now we can go Shift D in our front orthographic view with this one selected and then go X and move it over to the side. So once you've finished that um, move, you can go Shift R to repeat that. So just duplicating them like this. And then we'll select all of these. I'm gonna go Shift D, Z, move them up and just click. And then I'm gonna go Shift R just to repeat that action. So I'm gonna add in about this many. I'm not gonna go more than that. I think that should be fine for the simulation. But if we were to go, you know, this is going to our front um, first keyframe here. If I were to hit the space bar, um, it's just gonna fall right through, not interact with anything. So we need to add some properties to the surrounding things. So we're gonna select the domain here. We're gonna go to our rigid body. We have to make it passive this time because it's not gonna be active. So make it passive. Come here to the shape and let's make that mesh. And the rest of the things we'll leave as they are. But instead of having to go through the whole thing doing the rest like that to all the other things, we're just gonna select these guys at the bottom. So holding and shift, select these three plates at the bottom. Control J just to join them. And then while they're still active, we're gonna hold and shift and select this back plate. So now we have these selected. And while we're still holding and shift, we're gonna select the pegs. So now we have the rest of the objects selected. And while we're still holding in shift, we're gonna lastly select the domain. So that's now the active one. And we're gonna go and hit F3 on our keyboard. And while that's all active there, we're gonna hit copy. And we're gonna go copy from active. So type in copy from active. Now, if we click on this backboard here or any of the other objects that are not the balls here, we're gonna come over here to the physics tab. We're gonna see that they now have that same rigid body. So we don't have to manually go and give a rigid body and make it passive to each one of them. But if you wanted to do that way, you could. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we are gonna see some nice, sweet interaction here. So um, yeah, we're gonna cache this out so it's not this slow. So before we do that though, we also wanna come over here to our rigid body settings over here, go down to the rigid body world and I'm gonna make the speed two times faster. So I'm just gonna come in here and type in two. And um, it really depends on how long you wanna run the simulation. I'm just gonna leave it at the default 250 because this frame right here, the frames here are 250 frames, 24 frames a second. And I'm gonna be going to the cache down here. So come to the cache under the rigid body. It's okay to start at frame one and I'll let this cache through to 250. First of all, just make sure whatever you do to save your blend file before you do any of this. And then you can come over here and hit bake. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so the cache is now finished. It took a few minutes on my computer. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, 
we're gonna see our simulation running. And look at that, doesn't that just look really, really satisfying? So we have all of these little balls, they're all falling into their little spaces here. And you can add as many balls as you want. I just kind of did this small sample size here just to show you the little demonstration. But that looks really cool. And um, you're gonna see there are some stray balls here, but I'm gonna show you how to deal with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually select our domain here, because we don't really need it in the scene. So we're gonna select our domain and we're gonna hit the M key. I'm gonna click on new collection. Let's just call this junk. Right, whatever you call it, whatever you want. Oops, what am I typing in? Junk, I'm just gonna type in junk and I'm gonna hit okay. So now over here in our collections, just drop the main collection down. You're gonna see this new collection called junk. So just come here to the eye and just untick it. We don't need to see that. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, in our scene here, select the backboard here and also the pegs. Just quickly hit H just to temporarily hide them. Also just select the light and the camera on the scene. We're just gonna delete them, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select while we're in our last frame here, we're gonna select all of these stray balls and we're gonna hit M and we're just gonna come and click on that junk collection and move them there. And now we can go Alt H to bring back our board and the pegs. And now if we go to frame one and we play the animation, we won't see those stray balls and you won't even really know about them. So that's a little way to get around that. And um, there we have it. And we even have this one little stray one sitting here. So I'm just gonna grab that and just, if you have the same thing, I'm just gonna move it to the junk collection. So now it's super simple to do the materials differently. So what we're gonna do is quickly grab everything in our scene, make sure in the last frame. And so select everything here and just hit H, everything except the balls over here. And then I'm just gonna select each group. So I'm gonna select the first group of balls by just clicking here and dragging. And then I'm gonna hold and shift and just select one of them. I'm gonna to go to my materials tab, click new, and I'm just gonna to go to the um, viewport display, which is just gonna show us in the viewport it's a color. So I'm gonna just make it any color like blue. Then I'm gonna go control L and I'm gonna go link materials. So now all of these active ones here are um, gonna get the main color of this main active one here, if that makes sense. So then we're gonna come over here and select these ones, holding and shift, click on any one of these balls here, go new. Go to your viewport display, make it any color, just so you can see it's been applied. Control L and link materials, and do the same thing here. Okay, just like that, I might make that green. Control L, link to materials. Then I'm gonna click here, drag all of these, holding and shift, select any one of them. Click on new, make a color, it doesn't really matter what. Control L and link materials. And now we're done, so let's go back to frame one. Alt H to unhide everything. And now this is where it looks super satisfying. And there we have it. So I'm not gonna do a materials or lighting tutorial, like I said, because there's already a ton of stuff like that on YouTube. This is just kind of showing you how to do this sort of thing in Blender. So just to make it stand out a bit, a bit better, I might actually just give the, these things some placeholder materials as well, just so it stands out. But yeah, you guys now kind of get the point here of what's going on. So what have I got? Yeah, so that is it. That's how you make this kind of cool animation in Blender. And um, I'm gonna be making this blend file available on my Patreon, so if you guys wanna check that out in the description. It also really helps support the channel and allows me to make a lot of this content for the community. So I really appreciate those of you who are on Patreon and are kind of helping me out. So I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.